welcome back this is it so photoshop has just released this june 2020 update a couple of days back adding a bit more artificial intelligence to the select subject and once you understand when and where to use select subject in your professional workflow things will never be the same again i consider this the biggest update to photoshop since content aware so, the professional approach to making precise selections is to analyze what separates the subject from the background. Is it the luminance contrast? Is it color contrast? Or a mix of everything? So basically, the properties of the image will dictate what selection method you should use. For example, in this image we have a clean background. And what do you think separates the subject from the background? It's the pink color, right? So if we can select the pink color, we can isolate our subject from the background. And since hair selection is involved in this image, it requires a bit of advanced masking techniques. And the fastest way to do this is either by using the closest color mask on the panel or a more targeted color range technique where you choose the exact color to mask out. And then you can fine tune the mask using dodge and burn technique with the brush in overlay mode. Here I'm using the panel because this technique is choreographed for the fastest workflow possible in Photoshop. Take a look. I'm spending zero time creating layers, selecting different brushes or blend modes. I've explained this technique in detailed steps for those who don't have the panel and other techniques like blend if in the luminosity masking video. So once I fine tune the mask, I can instantly have a selection and invert it and then create a layer mask. And to fix this color contaminations around the hair, I'm going to create an empty layer set to the color blend mode. Then by pressing Alt or Option and clicking between the two layers, I'm going to clip it to the mask layer below. And this will make our painting visible only through the mask. Now with the eyedropper tool, I'll select the hair color and paint around the edges of the hair. And you can also choose different shades of hair color in different areas. Now since this hair is a lighter blonde and is completely reflecting the pink background, I'm going to paint all over the hair to remove the pink cast. So in less than 2 minutes I have a decent hair cut out and it looks good in both dark and bright backgrounds. And yes there is some finishing left to do which can be done manually by feathering the mask by painting black around the edges with a brush with very low flow and also use the fade tool to control the opacity of your strokes. You get the idea right? Now let's duplicate this image on a new layer and let me also hide the previous layers and see what the new select subject has in store for us. Now you can activate select subject by going to the select menu and then click on subject. But I prefer a faster way to do this. That is by clicking on any of your smart selection tools like the quick selection and then on the top click on select subject. And once you get your selection, you can click on select and mask. This will open a task space for you to visualize and fine tune your selection. And take a look at the hair. That's a great start with just one click. And by the way, if you have the quick selection or the object selection tool active, then you can also choose to select subject from this task space as well. Here on the other side, in the view mode, we have quite a few viewing options and you can control the opacity or the transparency of the background in each view mode. Now keep in mind that we have made our selection prior to entering the select and mask task space. Those who prefer entering the select and mask workspace first and then clicking select subject, you will see a completely blank background here depending on which view mode you are on. So I'm going to clear the selection by clicking here on clear selection and I have a completely blank space. Why? Because there is nothing selected to be displayed. Once you start making the selection with any of these tools or with select subject, only then you will start to see the selected areas. So the onion skin view mode visualizes the selection on a transparent background. The marching ants outlines your selection as marching ants. The overlay mode visualizes the selection as a color overlay where you can control the opacity and the default color is red which you can change from here. The unselected or masked out areas are displayed in that red color but from here you can make it to display selected areas if you want. Next on black displays your selection on a black background and on white displays your selection on a white background and the black and white visualizes the selection as your regular black and white layer mask. And finally, on layers displays your image on top of all the visible layers. I usually prefer to check the image in both the white and the black background. This is the best way to see the quality of your selections because some images are cut out from darker backgrounds and they will look better in black and the ones cut out from a lighter background looks nicer in white. 
I also use the red overlay mode to check if I missed anything that is out of place. By pressing F on your keyboard, you can cycle through all the modes and then use the X key to temporarily disable the mode. The X shortcut comes in handy to quickly see the original without the need to lower and increase the opacity again and again. Now we can refine our selection even further using quick selection and other tools like the brush and lasso tools over here. And they work exactly the same like in our regular Photoshop workspace. So in case you miss a selection, you can do it from right here without having to go back and forth. And this brush tool is to paint on the mask to hide or reveal it, just like our layer mask. But personally, I prefer not to use any of these tools here since select and mask interface is a bit slow and demands a lot of computer power. The only tool specific for this particular task space is the refine edge tool, which comes in handy for fine tuning the hair selection. And the way it works is you brush over the soft areas such as hair or fur and it will add the fine details back into the selection. This is similar to the edge detection slider which is a global refine edge. But I'm doing it here manually with the brush because I want to define the outline of the hair. And to see what we are painting, we need to click on show edge checkbox. And this is only enabled when you have the refine edge brush or the quick selection tool selected. Now take a look at what the global edge detection does. Inside are the areas that we have selected and outside are the ones we have not selected. And what we are seeing is the edge area Photoshop is refining. The smart radius allows a variable edge size for your selection. You can try it out, but it may or may not work for your image. So let me turn this back down. And now we only have a brushed edge. And while painting, you can use regular shortcuts like square brackets to increase or decrease your brush size. And we can paint in more edge or hold Alt or Option or use the minus brush to remove the areas we don't want the edge detection on. So ideally, this is the way to refine edge in select and mask. But for hair, I wouldn't recommend it this way because Photoshop's algorithm is also taking in account the color you click on where the center of your brush touches. So I prefer to see what the algorithm comes up with instantly rather than painting the perfect edge and then getting shocked when I toggle the show edge off. Now below are the global refinements and again for hair, we rarely need to use any of them because these tools work better with regular cutout with edges that have defined lines and curves. And if I do use it, it would be a very small increment. So the smooth slider reduces irregular bumps in the selections. The feather slider blurs the selection edges. The contrast slider sharpens the soft edges. And the shift edge slider expands or contracts the selection by moving borders inwards with negative values or outward with positive ones. And moving it inward can help remove unwanted background colors from selection edges. Well, now that you know that, let's move back to our image. So to remove the color contamination from the hair edges, we have this checkbox called decontaminate colors. And it uses content aware to replace color fringes with the color of selected pixels from around. As you can see for this image, decontaminate colors does quite a good job. And you can adjust the slider to change the decontamination amount if needed. It's more evident in the white background. Now pay attention because this is important. Since the decontaminate colors option uses content aware, it changes the pixel color around the actual image. And this is a destructive technique. And so it requires to output to a new layer with a new mask to retain the original layer so you can revert to it if needed. I'll show you what that means in just a minute. So in this output too, we cannot choose to output as a selection or layer mask. So I'll choose a new layer with mask and click on OK. And I'll show you what the content aware of decontaminate colors has done. Okay, so if I hold shift and click on the layer mask, it temporarily disables the layer mask to show the original image. And take a look at that. This is what the decontaminate colors has done to the original image. And that's why we were forced to output on a new layer since Photoshop has kind of destroyed this image and we wouldn't be able to revert to it if we didn't have this duplicate layer. And this decontaminate color option might not work as good all the time as with this image. And in that case, you can always use the paint in color mode like I showed you in the manual technique. Now let's try select subject with this image here, which also has transparency in our dress. So I'll click on select subject and then select and mask. So that's a good starting point with the hair, but the transparency of the dress not so much. But when I combine this with refine edge brush tool, and clean around the hair and the transparency of the dress, 
Take a look at that. It's doing an amazing job. I don't even care about the rest of the body because I never will use select and mask for that. That's a job for the pen tool to give a crisp and precise selection. Right now, I'm only focused on the hair and the transparency of the dress because these things take more time to do it manually. Let me explain this with another example because I'm sure you must be thinking these are kind of easy images to isolate because of their single color background. So let's try something with a busy background like this image. So I'll click on select subject and then select and mask and check it out. Look at the fine hair it has isolated and pressing the X you can see the original image and hit X again to get back to our selection preview. Now I can refine this further with the refine edge brush or perfect it with advanced technique easily because I have such a great start. Now let's try yet another image with a busy background with no color separation. So first select subject and then select and mask. Amazing right? Making these selections would require a combination of luminosity and color masking techniques to get somewhere close to this what select subject does in one click. So let's try and understand what is happening behind the scenes. From my experiments in the last two days on over 50 different images, I can say that the machine learning looks for humans or animal shapes and tries to identify the edge softness, color, contrast, sharpness of both the subject and the background and factors all of them in and calculates the final result. Is it perfect? Not quite yet, but it's a great starting point to integrate artificial intelligence with professional workflow. It does one thing great, that is give a great starting point for hair selections in one click. And I've never used refine edge or select and mask on a single client work before because as a professional, you want reliability. But now, at least for masking out hair, it's proving to be extremely reliable and I'm truly excited to do hair cutouts now. Select subject doesn't replace the pen tool, luminosity or color range mask. The edges here are still jagged in most places and would require spending double the time spotting and fixing them. But that being said, if you have a completely clean single color background, you might get a perfect selection in just one click. So go ahead and update your Photoshop to the latest version and experiment yourselves. And I'll show you some advanced hair retouching techniques in the future videos. And don't forget to like, subscribe and ring the bell to be the first to be notified for our upcoming tutorials. As always, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.